Be next to the yeah. name list. Oh, come. Okay, guys. Let's start. Oh, Dato Azari will do the welcome address. Lah. Zengu. How to... What's his name, Dr. Zen? Zengu. Change the name. Oh. Huh? Huh? Oh. Who? Father. Father passed away today. Oh, shit. How are you? Okay, guys. Um... Kamara, I can hear you, but you cannot see me because my audio has not started by the host yet. No, brother three. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, so you're okay. Let's have an audio test. Your other, your other operator is... Ah, Krish. Krish is next. Krish, Krish. Krish is saying something. Audio. Okay, audio. Good. All right. Audio okay. is good. Can we see the... Can you see the NGO, Dato? No, not yet. Uh, okay, I huh? see okay. you uh, in the lab. I cannot see the right. NGO yet. Now, you, you, can you see me soon? Oh, I cannot see okay. my... I can see that. Okay. I can, can see, see that. Now. Excellent. Excellent, Asri. All right. Perfect. We see both now. Okay. So um, now my video is not yet operational, but you can hear me. Are you all set to review the video and present the case? I'll give a welcoming address. Um, make some introductions. And then we are good. Yeah. We are good. The, we are good from the lab. Okay, so what I'll do is make the introductions in a short while. I assume I said as my video comes on. My video sure, is... Just to let you know, we have already started the case. Okay. Yeah, halfway through. All right. Just to keep to time, la boss. All right. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. okay. No problem. No problem. Go back to AP AP direct. Allow, allow some time also for discussion as we go along. La. Yeah. All right. So I think the only person that is logged on at the moment. Uh, in this uh, faculty is me, you, and you, but uh, Rosalie and Prof Zenger. I'm not sure if he's logged on. I don't see his name yet. Dr. Zenger is in. That is right. I see his name now. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can see. Uh, yeah. Zenger, I can see, of course, Esther and then Kevin Lowe. Um, okay, Rosalie is not on yet. Okay, all right. Fine. My video seems to be uh, still muted by the host. Lah. Is that correct? At least I can't log on anyway to actually show. We can you. hear you. Yeah, you can hear me. That's that's correct. Video we can't. No, not yet. <sighs> so perhaps um in the interest of time we can start. Shall we start? Please make the introductory comments. Okay, so let them check about the audio from uh, the others first. We have about nineteen participants. Okay, sorry, I'm here. Okay, Rosli, how are you? Hi, Rado. All right. Hi, hi. I'm, I'm not saying your, vid, your, your video also, neither is my video online yet. But anyways, uh, as long as I you can... I can't open my video either. Ah, so that's fine. Maybe they don't... Oh, stop. Stop. <laughs> maybe, maybe they only want younger people. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so, as long as you can hear us all. Shall we now start? What do you think? Prof Zenger, how are you? What's Prof Zenger? Prof Zenger is a... Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I'm here. Uh, I can see you very clearly. Eh? Okay. Oh, okay. thank you. Welcome. Uh, I'm Dr. Azari Rosman from the National Heart Institute, and uh, I'm here with, with a co-chair and co-panelist with Dr. Rosdi. And of course, we welcome you on board this faculty. It's a pleasure to have you. And I, I think, um, uh, of course, uh, we know that you are very close associate of, of Chen Xiaoliang, who's unable, unfortunately, to make it with us. Uh, but be that as it may, we've got an interesting session today for the next uh, one and a half hours it's to 4.30. Today is, of course, the 5th of January. Happy New Year, everyone. 2023 and I think it's a good start to the new year with us introducing something new on the market the first of its kind uh, which involves a bifurcation lesion using a pot balloon which is of very specific uh, design and uh, Prof Zenger maybe we can talk about that later as we go along but so let me make the introductions first uh, Prof Kumaro will be um, uh, Dr Krish will be presenting the case and his team in a short while uh, he's a senior consultant cardiologist here at the National Heart Institute and we'll be doing a bifurcation lesion involving uh, the left main as well as CERC and uh, LED. Is that correct? Kumara, over to you. Yes, yes, Prof. Yep, you're right. So, Kumara, you can start now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Rosli, Prof. Uh, Azari, Prof. Uh, Zenger. Uh, this is our team. Uh, I have Krish with me, my senior registrar. 
he will uh, give a brief description and uh, history of this patient. Krish? Okay. Uh, very good afternoon to all the esteemed faculty, uh, Dr. Sri Azari, Dr. Rosli, Dr. Uh, Prof. Zen, and uh, all my fellow uh, team here. Uh, today, we're going to see a patient who is a 72-year-old elderly lady with a high bleeding risk. She has a background history of end-stage renal failure on regular dialysis. She has a history of duodenitis and gastric ulcer, recent scope done in November 2022, with a latest hemoglobin of 11. She also has a history of uh, diabetes and hypertension on well-controlled insulin regime. Uh, she has heart failure with reduced ejection fraction with an EF of 35%. She came to us one month ago with a chest pain and a raised troponin. She was treated as non-STEMI. At that time, coronary angiogram was performed. We noted to have a severe two-vessel disease with a left main involvement. She was given the option of bypass, but at that time, family and patient not keen, and she opted only for medical therapy in view of the comorbid and the risk of surgery. She was discharged. Unfortunately, a week ago, she's admitted again for recurrent angina and currently treated for non-STEMI. This time, uh, extensive family discussion was done. She still refused bypass, but she's consented for a high-risk PCI today. Thank, Thank you, you, Chris. Okay. So, we, we have actually done the coronary angiogram. If, if we can have the angio on the main screen. Yeah. Can you all see the angio? Yes, yes. Okay, excellent. So, this is the... Can we play the play it? Play, yeah. So this was done this this uh, afternoon. Uh, we just took a shot. It was a right femoral access. We've got a left okay. femoral access for a balloon pump, intraoperative so balloon pump. Video. Given the fact that she has got reduced ejection fraction, uh, a viability study was done. So both LED circumflex are both viable. Uh, this is the left sided uh, coronary angiogram. As you can see, there is diffuse tubular stenosis of the left main with a tight lesion at the distal left main. What appears to be an osteal circumflex lesion and a proximal osteal, osteoproximal LED lesion, uh, in keeping with the Medina 111 uh, bifurcation lesion. Next. Uh, I think we can see it clearly here in the spider view. It's a tight lesion, distal left main, uh, osteal LED and osteal circ. Post what makes it more interesting is that it's a calcified lesion, at least from the, no box, no from box, the yes, geography. Yes. Next. Uh, there appears to be a moderate lesion at the mid mid LED, uh, equally calcified, but uh, the contraction is good. Uh, we have got good distal vessels, and the disease is more concentrated on the proximal segment of all three all three segments: the left main LED and circumflex. Next, so I think we can appreciate here that this is the culprit. Uh, next, we also took a shot at the right coronary artery, just minimal shots. She's end-stage renal failure who is N-uric. So we have to be a bit uh, cautious with the amount of contrast we use. So just took two shots of the right side to show that there's just minimal disease in the distal segment. So this is a bit assuring that we have good support from the, okay, stop, stop, from the right coronary artery. And uh, the problem now is mainly uh, over the left side, the left main LED and circumflex. So she has got angina and she has got uh, intradilytic hypotension. Uh, so basically, in summary, we have a, a complex patient, an elderly end stage high bleeding risk patient with a complex coronary lesion, uh, a left main LED circumflex bifurcation, uh, and with calcification. So I would like to pass it back to you, Dr. Azari, to discuss uh, and and suggest what would be the appropriate treatment strategy. Okay, thanks, uh, Kumar. It's a uh, succinct uh, presentation. Uh, I, I, my apologies. Uh, Rosalie is also on board. I mentioned uh, briefly. Rosalie is the senior consultant cardiologist from CVS Central uh, at the hospital in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, Rosalie, perhaps we can uh, invite your comment before we move on to Prof. Zenger to um, get your opinions in regards to the strategy for this. And I'm particularly interested in uh, um, what your plans are in regards to um, uh, which, ves which vessel to actually open up first as opposed to, you know, since you have an equally stenotic uh, lesion uh, involving both, both major vessels. Okay, th thanks uh, Azari and um, uh, thank you Kumara for uh, sharing with us this case because this is uh, certainly a complex uh, case. Uh, you have alluded to the problems of the uh, uh, findings just now and also clinical uh, uh, aspects of the patient. Um, 
Uh, firstly, is I think uh, the use of balloon pump. Uh, usually, in uh, in our setup, uh, we I feel that we can still get away without uh, putting an intrauteric balloon pump. Obviously, if you want to consider high risk, uh, other mechanical support would probably be better. But I I think uh, what is important is your confidence level in wanting to support this patient. If you feel that a balloon pump is necessary, then all I'm all for it. So it's, it's again, your level of confidence about uh, performing this uh, case under support or without support. But if you don't do without support, then you've got to be very careful and you've got to be very clear about how you do things. Secondly, I think in terms of looking at this, we're very clear we're going to treat both lesions. Uh, bifurcation, the question is whether it's going to be a one or two stand strategy. Uh, I believe in this case, even though the osteo lesion is short, uh, but, is it but uh, it's a sizable circumflex, uh, it is calcified. I would uh, have a higher um, level of wanting to do a two-stand strategy, if uh, at all. Uh, and I usually perform uh, you know, a DK crush. Uh, thirdly, I believe it's calcified, but imaging is very important to uh, assess uh, the degree of calcification, and it will help you to decide uh, how best to uh, prepare this uh, lesion well. Uh, and geographically, if I were to say this, I would think that we need to do some debulking of the calcium, whether it's going to be by hyphrectomy system, either rota or OS, or even with, uh, uh, since it's very short, uh, even with uh, IVL balloon. And, and if let's say calcification uh, supports the use of IVL, like uh, the arc is more than 270 degrees, I will go for it because it's so much easier. Uh, and you know, from uh, rather than putting in arthrectomy, uh, and the amount of calcium cracks uh, will be uh, probably uh, be able to be achieved with an IVL balloon. So that's that's my take on it. Right. So so I just want to pick you on that uh, uh, device, uh, which is in particular a non-IVL approach. Right? If, you, if you use an OAS or if you use a, a rota. Now you have an issue of a very tight uh, contralateral artery. So assuming you put in one, there is always at risk of, uh, I mean, you can't put a wire across, of course. Um, I mean, how do you approach that uh, risk of uh, de de device uh, um, ablation of one lesion and without a wire in the other lesion and at the same time risking a closure? Yeah, I, I think uh, firstly, uh, when you look at this, obviously you want to treat uh, the LED as much as possible because that's the most important vessel. So I'll go for it. But if you are to go uh, and, you know, again, the, uh, the imaging is very important to assess the oh. degree of severity. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you are going to go for arthrectomy, it's uh, quite uh, safe oh. to actually go one mm -hmm. by one. And mm -hmm. uh, the risk of losing uh, the side branch in this case is going to be very low. All right. Okay, well noted. Prof. Jenga, uh, your comments, please, in regards to strategy, perhaps, and uh, how would you approach this problem? Yeah, thank you for your invitation for to join this uh, uh, complex PCI and live discussion. So for this uh, patient is uh, uh, 72 years old and lady and because the high bleeding risk. So for the patient uh, and reduce the ejected fraction for the distal lymph man bifurcation nearance. So uh, probably I want to use the IBP to stand by to for this uh, dynamic uh, to stable. And uh, the second uh, for this uh, strategy for the distal lymphoma bifurcation because this uh, distal uh, lesion uh, focus on that uh, distal lymphoma and uh, um, probably involves the uh, ostium the AOD and the for the uh, ostium the circumflex. I think this mild disease. So first i uh, um, Probably I use the IFS to check for this uh, um, uh, distal bifurcation. And from the angiogram, because this, uh, according to the um, definition criteria uh, developed from the Professor Chen Shaoliang, uh, it's because the um, OSTM and the second place on this is very short. So I think the problem is uh, a simple bifurcation lesion. So probably I use the uh, single stand technique for this digital development publication. And uh, then, and then as, uh, use the one stand across uh, from the um, proximal the IOD to the ostium the left man, and then and, uh, to, uh, uh, to say the ostium the uh, second flex is, uh, is uh, comprom uh, compromised or not. And uh, probably use the 
uh, provisions than T or uh, the drug um, TCB for the second flex. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you for that comment. Um, okay, Kamara, over to you. What did you actually do? So, okay, thank you very much. I think I appreciate both uh, our panelists' opinion. It, I mean, uh, whether it's going to be a two stand strategy or a single uh, provisional stand with uh, or a hybrid approach with the DCB on the on the circumflex, both both are good options. I think to move further, we'll probably look into the IVAS. Uh, imaging is definitely indicated here. That will give us an idea of the lesion characteristics, how much of calcification we are dealing with, and definitely vessel size. So we are very we have. Uh, actually engaged, we've got a, a seven French access, we've got an EBU uh, 307 French guide. Uh, the left main is diffusely diseased. So upon engagement, there is ventricularization of the, pre of, of the pressure. Uh, so we have carefully wired down the LED and the circumflex and uh, disengage the guide just to float it a little bit in the iota so that to not dampen the pressure. And then uh, proceeded with the IVUS of both the LED left main and the circumflex into the left main. I looked. I would like to invite my fellow colleague, Dr. Lo Hong Shing, to share the IVUS findings. Can we have the IVUS on the screen, please? Yeah. Thanks. All right. Lo, to you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kumara. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is a uh, IVUS pullback from the mid LED to the osteo left main. It's a very diffuse disease in the LED, so we decide to start from the mid. LAD. So you can see it's very diffuse uh, disease. And this is probably the, the best uh, site for the distal stand landing, which is about 3.5 millimeter. And as we pull back, there's not much calcification. Mm -hmm. And then right just before, just right before the bifurcation, this is the osteal uh, LAD, which is also about 180 degree calcification there. And just before the bifurcation, you can see there's almost 360 degree uh, short segment of calcification. And here we comes to the left main, this is the left main. And then you can see there's disease uh, eccentric plug in the osteo left main as well. And the left main size is about 4.0. Okay. And this one, I'll bring you to the Ivers pullback from the mid circumflex to the left main. And again, because this vessel is diffusely diseased, we decided to start the IVERS pullback from the mid circ uh, As you can see, it's all diffusely diseased here. And the vessels, there's some calcification here in the mid, and the vessel size is also about 3.5. Uh, it's also fib uh, fibrolipid plug in the uh, circumflex. And now we are coming near the ostium of the circumflex, which is uh, fibrolipid plug. And this is back into the uh, distal left main, where we see the 360 uh, degree of calcification and into the back, into the left main again. Thanks, Lo. Thank you. So I think this is where imaging plays a very important role. So the I, I must say we are quite surprised that the degree of calcification is not as bad as we had expected uh, from what we saw from the coronary angiogram. So uh, what we have here is, is a, a tight concentric 360 degree calcification at the distal left main but it's just a short segment. And I was a bit concerned about the osteal cirque, whether the chunk of calcification will give any trouble, but it looks more fibro fatty, more than calcium. And uh, what appears on the angiogram as a bit of a chunk of calcium at the osteum of the cirque is probably extravascular. It's probably not, not causing any significant obstruction based on the IVUS. So I would like to put it back to the panel how we should proceed. Would, 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 would any one of you still consider some form of atherectomy for the calcification or would we put our money a bet on our scoring balloons? Right, Prof, maybe, thanks uh, Kumara. Prof, Zengke, maybe I can ask you since you're, uh, you have certain preferences in regards to device, um, do you think that the, the IVAS finding alters your management in terms of uh, what to use? Forward. Forward. Would you just use a balloon, NC scoring balloon, or would you uh, consider the support uh, of uh, artrectomy? Forward. Forward, Lucky. Prof Zanger. Forward. Is Prof Zanger with us? Uh, yeah, back, 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 back. Ah, oh, lama. Rosalie. Yeah. Prof Zanger, are you with us? Rosalie? All right. Um. So I still believe that I would do some form of debulking over there because, again, it's a left main 
and sometimes you may not, uh, it's quite thick and uh, nearly 360 degrees. Uh, I would think that uh, I would like to get it well, uh, you know, uh, expand uh, for the, the standard will expand some for the, the bulking. Uh, if I say I have a choice, I would still prefer to use a uh, an IVL for this case, uh, and it's uh, something very discreet. I would probably be able to get uh, fairly good results of, uh, once the IVL is utilized. So that's my first choice, uh, uh, actually, because it's very short and discreet. Um, if uh, if uh, I don't have that, then I would still want to think consider arthrectomy. Uh, uh, and if uh, if I still don't have that, then obviously you're going to have to go for a high pressure non compliant balloon, right. either scoring or non compliant balloon. Okay, so so this, this is at variance from your traditional um, uh, approach, which is uh, rotablation of non OAS. The IVL has actually come to the fore, and I think I agree with you because it is. Um, it's a re very easy to use, and I think it cuts out the excitement of uh, of, of that, the other device therapies. And I think for the bifurcation lesion, is a reasonable approach. Um, Kumara, I think we've lost Prof Zenger for a moment on his uh, internet. No problem. Um, so, Kumara, what, what have you decided, and what is the justification for your decision? Okay, I think there are pros and cons for both approaches. If we use the IVL, uh, there's this advantage of keeping the wire in the circ. At least we'll not lose flow to the circ if there's any concern we're doing any form of arthrectomy. Uh, if, if we opt for the OAS or the rotablation, I think in, in my personal opinion, we get to get we, we get more calcium clearance. And if we get to shave off a bit of calcium, especially in the distal left main. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been times when our IVL balloon has failed mm -hmm. uh, in our experience. So there's, there are times when the calcium is just too much where the IVL doesn't crack it up enough and we sometimes have to use arthrectomy and IVL okay. and uh, in this case we, we going by the IVERS uh, initially pre-IVERS we wanted to do uh, an arthrectomy to both the LED and the circumflex uh, however we have changed our plan we decided to just attract the, the left main into the LED using, using an orbital arthrectomy okay. so do I, if you are deciding to do an IVL, do you think any you would have any difficulty in getting the IVL balloon across the stenosis? Absolutely, I, I don't think so. The 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 stenosis is the IVS catheter went down quite well easily. We have got a good EBU uh, for support, and yeah. if we got another wire in the circumflex, I think the IVL balloon would have uh, been able to take this lesion, right. and uh, uh, that's definitely a good option. But uh, in this case, we decided to go with uh, arthrectomy with OAS, orbital arthrectomy. Okay. So, so yes, we went with a slow, slow run. Uh, we had three runs and then at, at high speed, another three runs. I think we, we did fairly well with the amount of debulking uh, that uh, this OAS did. So we, as you had correctly mentioned, we had to remove the circumflex wire. Uh, but as what Dr. Rosley also mentioned, in most cases, it's not a problem. We are we still can attract one vessel and then if necessary, we can actually rewire the circ and even attract that. Uh, we have done it that person and, and that usually is not a problem. But if it's a very, very tight lesion and we are concerned about putting in a wire in the side branch, I think IVL would have been a better option. Right. So this is the, the arthrectomy, orbital arthrectomy. Next, next. So we prepared the lesion. Next. Next, she tolerated the, the procedure quite well. There was no bradycardia. There was no drop in the blood pressure. Next, we also did a bit of uh, shaving in the osteoproximal left means. Sorry, Machi. We'll go next. Okay, next. So this is right after our arthrectomy, or orbital arthrectomy. And then next, next, we rewired the circumflex. Okay, stop. Back, back. So. Next step, I think, would be balloon predilatation. Okay, uh, what about, did you get a chance of uh, having an IVUS uh, again just to see whether there's uh, some form no. of uh, cracks and separation of the calcium? I would have done that at all, but we had some issues setting it up earlier. So the IVUS machine was being used for that. Yeah. Uh, but I think the following pictures, once we show you, show you the balloon, you'll be quite convinced that the yeah. atrectomy actually helped uh, with the lesion preparation. Yeah, but, so but if it I looks may, nice anyway. Looks good, looks good. Yes, yeah. So if I may proceed, can I just show the vessel preparation with the balloons? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we, we started off with the wedge scoring balloon. Uh, this is a 3 0 uh, scoring. It opened up pretty well. The balloon is full. Next. And then at the ostium, I'm always a bit concerned when we go very high pressure. If it slips, I don't mind if it slips a little bit. I just let it slip for a while, get a bit of scoring, and then go back, pull it back a little bit, and then go uh, slowly at high pressures. Next, please. So this is the ostium of the circumflex where we were a bit concerned. This is the, the weakest link. This is where ISR always happens whenever we use a two-stand strategy. So I strongly believe that we should spend time and, and be very cautious about preparing the ostium of the side branch really well before actually implanting a stand. I must say we are quite happy next with the balloon uh, predilatation of the osteal circ. This is a 3-0 uh, wedge. Next. Into the left main. So this is pretty good. I mean, if, if we can get this much of uh, balloon expansion, I think uh, uh, we can be quite confident that the, the osteum of the circ will be well covered. Next. Next. So the same balloon, the 3-0 wedge, managed to go in the LED. Uh, though it was a wing balloon, I, I, I find that it still uh, has got a very good crossing profile. Next. So this was pre dilatation of the LED. Next. We are trying not to go down too low and to keep the short, the stand length as short as possible because of a high bleeding risk. We try, we, we don't want to, if there's a need to interrupt her DAPT, as long as at least the, the risk of stand thrombosis won't be as bad. Yeah. So again, uh, this shot shows that our, our balloon pre is quite good. We get good uh, uh, balloon expansion, a 3 O's wedge. This is at 20 atmospheres. Next. Next. And this is the pre of the left main itself. Next. Next, 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 next. This is just for measurement. Next. Next. So we then proceeded with a further vessel preparation with a 3-5 wedge. All right. Next. So again, next. More uh, emphasis on the ostium of the circumflex. Again, very cautiously going up at high pressure, slowly at 12-18 at 20 atmospheres, hoping that we don't cause any perforation because there seems to be, though the, the, the IVA shows there's no calcium at the osteum of the circumflex, I'm still a bit concerned about that chunk I see on the angiography. I still worry that if I go too aggressively, I may cause a perforation. Next. Next. So we've got a 3.5, sorry, the patient had moved. So that's 3.5 balloon at high pressure at, at 20 atmospheres. Next. The same balloon next at the left main and then down. Next, next. This is the LED pre dilatation. Next. Next. Okay. Again, this is the tighter spot. We have got good balloon uh, uh, expansion. So next. It fully open. Next. Next. This again ballooning the left main at high pressures. Next. 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 Okay. So this is where we are. With, uh, we have just done the vessel preparation. I think we have got good flow down the LED. Next. And uh, this is the final shot that we have of the circumflex. Okay. So I believe our strategy, with our strategy, we have managed to prepare the vessel to a certain extent. Right. We now have right. to decide how to proceed. Should it still be a two-stand strategy? Initially, we were thinking of a decay crush or whether it should be a provisional stenting with DCB of the side branch is still a viable option. There are some di dissections in the circumflex, but I think uh, DCB can still be an option. I, I would like to get the opinion of the panel, please. All right. Thank you, Kamara, for that nice overview. Uh, Prof. Zang, welcome back, uh, Prof. Zang. So uh, just to get you up to speed, what they did was uh, after a discussion between lithotripsy uh, and uh, 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 at, at the orbital atractomy or rota, uh, the decision was to do an OAS down the LED, and subsequently they achieved several runs, um, some debulking of the procedure, although IVERS was not done. And you can see following that uh, with the wedge uh, NC3O and subsequently NC35 in the second flex. So perhaps um, I can ask a question in regards to the preparation of the vessels itself. Uh, I think you've got excellent vessel uh, uh, dilatation of the proximal LED and that goes into the, uh, the left main. And you can see the balloon size is well expanded. Uh, however, I, I take issue in regards to whether or not uh, the second flex uh, osteum has actually opened up quite well. But you can see a straight jacketing of your balloon 
uh, when it expands in left main and LED as opposed to the circumflex osteum. So given the fact that you know this circumflex osteum is, a, is potentially problematic, uh, are you happy with the results? Or maybe I can ask uh, both Rosalie and uh, Prof. Zangler. Prof. Zangler first in regards to um, number one, the osteum circumflex, and secondly, what would you decide in regards to your stent, um, uh, stent DCB uh, program uh, plan? Yeah, <clears throat> it's a very good question. But I think this uh, ART and the circumflex or the distal neckline expand uh, very well. So it's a condition prepared is very, very good. I think from, from this angle, we can see a uh, second flex, or OSTM or second flex uh, expansion uh, is good. So, um, but I can see some uh, dissection for the um, proximal the second flex, but it's, I think it's a dissection type A or type B. I, but I think it's good. If, uh, if for me, for this condition, uh, um, probably I use uh, professional standing uh, from the um, uh, proximal LD to the uh, um, left man. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rosli, your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I share fully the concern that Kumara has, especially with the second flex, and that's where the uh, lesion resources will occur, and it's very difficult to treat ISR over there. Uh, now that from the imaging uh, we saw, and that's the beauty about imaging uh, in situations like this, uh, I'll, and, and you can see that there's also some amount of residual stenosis in the osteal uh, circumflex. I'll be more keen uh, for a single stand strategy. Uh, that, that dissection is uh, very small and it doesn't affect uh, flow. So uh, I'm, uh, as you know, I, I, I love uh, to use uh, DCB. So I would uh, think that maybe we should uh, DCB the circumflex first and then uh, put in a stent uh, uh, left main uh, to the LED uh, covering the osteum of the left main. Question is whether you need to recross and then uh, do a final kissing for this. Uh, it's something that we can discuss uh, afterwards, uh, but that's uh, how I would uh, proceed. Uh, agreeing with uh, Professor Zeng Zengi that uh, just a single stand strategy with uh, DCB in itself. So uh, thank you very much, uh, both. Uh, yeah, the uh, the situation, of course, the what you have both uh, rightly factored, all three of you actually factored in, is the fact that the osteum of the second flex is as it is, and perhaps under the circumstances, what is now available, which is the DCP can make a difference or simplify our decision-making process. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I agree. This is probably not the best uh, circumflex for stenting if you need to because of the, of the lesion. So uh, Kumara, over to you again. Tell us what you actually did. Okay, thank you very much for the valuable input. I think uh, it is a very uh, a valuable uh, point. Uh, and and uh, given the fact that she's also an end-stage patient, uh, end-stage renal disease patient who on regular dialysis, we want to try to keep the procedure as simple as possible. Uh, uh, if she comes back with instant re-stenosis, it's going to be a big mess trying to open up the circ and all. Uh, I think we are quite comfortable to accept the dissections in the circumflex and uh, we can go for provisional stenting uh, and using a DCB, a hybrid approach to the side branch, in, the, in this case, the circumflex. So I would just like to get the panel's opinion again as to as to, I mean, in our usual practice, we would usually DCB the side branch first and then stand the main branch to minimize the, the loss of drug as we cross the stand struts with the DCB if we do it after we stand the main branch. Uh, what's the opinion, Dr. Rosli, uh, Tazari, and uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Zen? Would you DCB the side branch first and then stand and then recross case and port? Or would you settle the stand first in the left in the main branch and then kiss and then final final dcb before you finish off there are, there are differing opinions so i'd like to get the opinions of experts here today All right thank you thanks uh, prof Zangir, perhaps your uh, input first yeah this is a great question for this uh, bifurcation units uh, use the dcb for the sign branch you know we all uh, ask for this question, use the DCP the first, uh, the before the standing and the main vessel, or the after main vessel. So um, I think maybe there are two questions, two, uh, two problems we need to uh, resolve. 
First, we just to concern about the sun branches uh, dissection. And if we use the DCP to uh, treat the sun branch, if we use uh, after treatment, if the dissection is uh, is dissection is very very is uh, uh, is severely because maybe we use the the stand the bellout for this sun branch. So probably we for this question, so uh, use the uh, the main vessel standing uh, firstly, and then we recross to the uh, wire to the sun branch and uh, use the semi balloon to pre dilate the sun branch as uh, the, the uh, stand the cell and uh, then the uh, DCB treated for the sun branch and the, uh, we have the study for this. Uh, uh, bifurcation DCP use for this sun branch uh, is uh, uh, is a uh, DCP bifurcation is the study for this bifurcation we all use the provisional standing oh. for the main vessel and the, after that we use the, um, the kissing balloon inflation for the um, main vessel or sun branch and then if the sun branch is the compromise uh, compromise is uh, 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 stylosis uh, greater than 70% or dissection or the greater than type B or the TB flow uh, less than uh, three for uh, great. So probably we use the DCB for the branch and compare with the um, um, it's a con conventional balloon to do this, uh, uh, to treat this sun branch. So for this uh, this publication TCP use, um, I think probably uh, TCP treatment is uh, first day or the after standing uh, is okay. Uh, it's uh, up to you. Okay. Uh, we'll see your talk on this. Uh, I mean, this is an off uh, ask uh, question whether we should DCB first or DCB after after uh, means and uh, mean vessel stenting. And uh, I would still, you know, is the vessel preparation is key. So we've, you've done that very well. And now you, this is where the decision is very important. Now you feel that uh, you can do a DCB because uh, the dissection is not flow limiting. It's very small and slight and uh, mild and it's not uh, affecting flow. So I would still prefer a DCB to side branch first because sometimes when you stand the, the, the main vessel, even after you kiss, Sometimes you may have difficulty getting the balloon down and you know, time is still an important aspect to getting the balloon down and uh, therefore uh, allowing the drug to be eluted to as, as quickly as possible. So it's, uh, to me, it's so much easier putting the balloon uh, in first, uh, using the distributed side branch and then stenting the main vessel. All right, fair enough. I think it's a fair comment that you wanna get that out of the way first and then put the stand across just in case you have difficulty later on. Um, so Kumara, what did uh, you actually find out? And uh, doing? Uh, no, we are still at. Uh, <laughs> oh, you haven't yet. Okay, we haven't. We, haven't. we wanted to wait for the experts to give their opinions. All so right. I think we will stick with the plan. I, 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 I think I, I also agree with how Dr. Rosli does it. Uh, DCB the side branch, stand the main vessel, recross, kiss and pot. Uh, it's much easier and simpler in the sense that we don't have to have difficulty recrossing the, the cells of the side branch uh, of the main vessel stand. So if you would like to continue a discussion, I will just proceed with the case. We're going to use a DCB for the side branch. We're going to use a 3030 uh, and then uh, discuss about stenting the main branch into the left 3030 main. DCB. Come. My question to you, Kumara, why not a 3.5? Uh, you can uh, put it at low pressure, five to six atmospheres, because the vessel yeah. size of the cell was actually a bit bigger three than 3.5. Five. Yeah, yeah the, three five. it's 3.5 it's in the proximal. Okay, that, I think that's a good idea. We'll use a 3.5, 3.5, 30. We'll go at low pressure. Yeah. 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 
Uh, yours ah, okay lah, okay lah. You got that? How many okay. how many DCB types are available in uh, Nanjing? Yeah, just the uh, mm, probably just three or four. Okay, so DCB. is there a particular preference yeah. that you have uh, in regards to the DCB? Uh, you have the B brown. Okay. Or some the Chinese domestic uh, domestic the uh, DCB from okay. the China. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're uh, going to three five, yes. Yeah, we're going to use a three five thirty. Since this is a, a bros match session, we're going to use the restore. Okay. Three five thirty. Uh, we have had quite a bit of experience using restore. It's again a uh, paclitaxel uh, coated balloons, and uh, the deliverability is quite quite good. This is a 3530, Boleh. Closer. It's also less of an amorphous issue in regards to the drug bonding to the balloon, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so, okay. Okay. Capture that. Okay. So small test. Now I just protrude a little bit more into the left main so that we get good osteal coverage test. Okay. Just capture that. Okay. Up slowly. Two, four. Six. Six. Okay. Right. Capture that. Mm. Um, so while you are doing that, we we welcome some comments on from uh, Rosli and Zengir. Zeng there are some operators who believe that problematic osteocircumflex uh, can be best served with two DCBs. That means you one DCB after another. If you foresee that it's going to be a problem. Uh, you know, uh, and we've met some operators who've done that. What is your view in regards to this uh, approach? Yeah. No. Rosalie? No. Um, for me, I think uh, for left mean stem, the data is not very strong yet uh, for the use of BCB. Um, and, uh, you know, and I therefore would uh, still uh, opt uh, to stent uh, the left mean in, until the main vessel. The side branch uh, is okay if you want to use a BCB oh. because you want to try to avoid stenting. But, I would still try to avoid the using true DCB for both uh, left mean and uh, yeah. uh, and mean vessels. So I try to avoid that. Okay, Prof Zenger, what is your view on regards to that? Yeah, I uh, totally agree with uh, uh, Dr. Rosani for the distal left mean application. Um, I never use the two uh, DCB to treat this uh, application. That's the, for the sun branch. <clears throat> okay. okay. Uh, and we also have uh, some problems with the blood pressure. So because this is extra, this is a big DCB and it's uh, right. almost occluding the left main. All right. So she doesn't tolerate it as much. But we have managed to get two inflations with thirty seconds each. Okay. Just add some blood flow. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, BP is picking up. Is it possible to show the hemodynamics on the screen? Uh, to show hemodynamics on the screen. Yeah, I have a question for the Dr. Rosman. Uh, Rosman. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. For this uh, distal level bifurcation, the patient with uh, reduced uh, eject fraction, uh, we use the DCP to treat the sun branch for this uh, circumflex. This circumflex is a very big vessel. We use the 3.5 uh, millimeter uh, to inflation from and, uh, the proximal circumflex to the open, left man. So, about the time, inflation time. Because uh, it's, uh, before we inflation too long, mm. um, probably it's, uh, it's chemical for the AOG or the second phase, the distal second phase. That's the stand? Absolutely, yeah. So that 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 is a, an issue. So I think what is clearly the obvious uh, thing that you should look out yeah. for your ECGM blood pressure. I mean, but what is the it's what is 
10, 10. 3, 5, Short 38. time of um, 3, 5, 38. Patient then, that then, feel comfortable for, for this kind of lesions, uh, Prozenga. How many seconds? DCB yeah, and... probably. I... <laughs> Urine, I probably I used the uh, uh, TCB for this lesion, probably just uh, 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Based on the patient, the, the symptomic. All right. Um, mm. so, so what do you think that if you give uh, shorter inflations a few times, is going to be any difference or it's uh, the longer inflation that really counts? Yeah, probably with uh, different uh, TCB uh, type, this uh, inflation time may be different for some Mm, TCB maybe 30 or 40 seconds is, uh, is okay. All right. Rosalie, inflation times and your DCB choice? Yeah. Uh, you I, I think if you look at data, the if you look generally, not for left mean, but if you look generally, the longer inflation time uh, is better until to a certain point. So if you look at the recommendation, it's been about 45 seconds to most of the packet axle drug eluting uh, balloons. Uh, and there have been some studies for insulin resources that 60 seconds is much better uh, than a shorter period. So it has some uh, uh, you know, weightage in terms of the time. Uh, when you inflate the balloon and deflate shorter, you still lose a lot of drug. So the second drug inflation may not be as much uh, and you may not, theoretically may not get as much uh, you know, drug illusion if you take multiple very short times. So now, the balloon, I agree, is uh, important because most uh, uh, drug eluting balloons will go for uh, 45 seconds as their recommendation. Uh, sequ uh, uh, sequent, please, uh, would say that at least 30 seconds. There have Morgan. been uh, animal uh, studies that shows that you have to have a minimum of 10 seconds for you to have Achy, a very right, good yeah. amount of drug illusion. So for left mean, I tend to use sequent, please because at least it gives me a shorter period, about 30 seconds, but uh, okay. I can uh, deflate much earlier. Uh, and knowing that at least some, uh, quite a, um, uh, an appropriate amount right. of drug will be looted. But I will go for a second inflation as soon. Right. So, I mean, there's, there's comments in regards to um, equal please that uh, most of it is actually okay. is, is in the first yeah. inflation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Of course, uh, you can maximize it with the second inflation. Right, uh, so Kamara, how are we now? Okay, we have uh, just, uh, we have DCB, as we have seen, we used a 3, 5, uh, 30 millimeter uh, restore DCB, and we managed to get, uh, I mean, she, she had a bit of issues with the blood pressure up, uh, and uh, we used two short inflations of uh, about 40 seconds each, 30 seconds each, so we got one minute, okay, down, 12, and down, and then oh. we have now stented the left main into the, uh, the LED into the left main, go back to cranial. What was the blood pressure drop like? Uh, she's doing about 120 now. It dropped to about 70. Okay. With the because uh, the the DCB was actually That's jutting right. out into the left main, yeah. so it was kind of obstructing flow in the left main. Right. She's good so far. No issues. What's then, uh, Kumara, and what's the length? Uh, we've got a three five thirty eight Boston Synergy Uh hmm. For a few reasons. Number one, I think it's got good data for one month uh, DAPT, just in case uh, the, she's, she's high bleeding risk, so uh, it comes with good data. Mm -hmm. And uh, number two, I think the sizing is based on IVERS, so 3.5 is, is what we, we uh, thought of using. And uh, uh, we, have, we have checked in uh, LAO 2020 to ensure that we have good osteal left main coverage. And uh, from this uh, short CINI, I think. Uh, it's fairly good. Very now nice. we will use the port balloon, the 4.0 port balloon at high pressures to port the stand in the left main before we actually recross into the circumflex before we kiss. Go back to Cordell. So, yeah, after the port, I usually do an IVERS to ensure that the stand has been well expanded, well, well opposed in the left main. Uh, because uh, if the wire goes below the stand, I think uh, we have more issues when we actually kiss. Any right. comments so far? Come, port so, balloon, 406. Yeah. Thanks, Tomara. So, so now I think we are we have come to the main event, which is really the discussion about the port and the choice of uh, balloon for the port. Uh, perhaps, you know, under the circumstances, uh, Prof Zenger, who is a close associate of Prof Chan Xiaoliang, who actually developed this uh, special port balloon, could give us an insight into this uh, the new Brosmet uh, port balloon, Prozen. 
Yeah, so for the bifurcation regions, all non bifurcation regions, so we usually use the port balloon to do the digital or proximal uh, optimization. For the digital, uh, the uh, optimization probably we use the 3.5 uh, based on the IFS uh, measurement. And because this port is a balloon, is a very short shoulder. We so, can precise the very, uh, very good and to do the post dilation and then to avoid the dissection at the edge of the distal uh, or the yes. proximal. And for this uh, left man, at uh, use the uh, based on IVS measurement, uh, probably we use the 4.5 or uh, okay. 5 millimeter port balloon to do the um, post dilation. And, uh, and then port. And uh, we probably Capture. then no. cross the wire to the second place to the casing blue information. Right. So, so this very short shoulder is, and I'm just looking at the uh, illustrations, it's about 0 0.6 uh, millimeters, very oh, short. One eight. One eight. Yeah. Suppose a normal sort of tapering shoulder, which can no. vary up to about three millimeters, isn't it, for angular? So that, that, that's really the, the strong point about this uh, bronze mat pot balloon. Rosalie, your experience with this particular uh, pot balloon? Yeah, I think uh, it's a welcome addition, and I particularly like it because it's short and also the short yeah. shoulders. Uh, it doesn't slip as yeah. much, uh, and especially when you put in the new, uh, you know, a, a stand. Uh, and, this, and that's what I like about it because sometimes you know the left main, for example, is short, and uh, you can't use an eight, and the overhang is a lot. So I quite like uh, using this balloon. Uh, the only thing is uh, whether it should be a 4.0 or bigger, because if you look at, uh, if I were to calculate the uh, vessel size, 3.5, 3.5 times 0.68, roughly about, the vessel size size should be, uh, and the left main should be about 4.7. So uh, I would have chose, chosen a 4.5 uh, non-compliant balloon. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, how are you going to inflate the balloon and how high? Uh, so. Uh, of course, uh, with this uh, uh, pot balloon, it gives Asia. you a bit more uh, okay. leeway and confidence of uh, of uh, uh, ballooning it. Uh, for example, and you're concerned about 4.5 balloon and it hangs a bit more into okay, the left. Down. Down. So I, I tend to, at a confluence, if I'm uh, a bit concerned, I don't go very high pressure because you don't want it to hang too much during the LED and cost perforation. But uh, once I've done that, uh, 12, 14 atmospheres, I pull back and then go much higher pressure. So... Mm -hmm. At the confluence, maybe to be a bit on the careful side, I don't go high, uh, but, uh, but uh, higher as I go, uh, I the more proximal left mean. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Prof Zen, uh, or do you want to add anything else to the comments given by Dr. Rosley? Quick, quick. Yeah, for this, uh, this bifurcation regions, because the port with another advantage is we have uh, the six millimeter uh, length of the balloon. We have the another long compliant balloon for the um, six uh, millimeter. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, at least you uh, our uh, cast net um, at least uh, probably eight. That um, short list uh, okay. uh, conventional non compliant balloon probably right. is, uh, eight millimeter. So this uh, this left man is very short, probably is um, six or eight millimeters. So use this uh, port balloon is very, very is a good to choice. So I have a question. Uh, are you okay, Kumara? Yeah, we are good. Yeah. We have so just have done the port with a 406 uh, uh, high pressure at 18 okay. to 20 atmospheres. But the, it, it may not be adequate, like what Dr. Rosalie mentioned, probably a 4.5. But uh, she's a lady. Uh, she's only about 100 and 40 centimeters. So usually I'm a bit cautious about going a bit okay, high, yeah, high uh, uh, with a bigger balloon. So as long as the Ivers says is good, then uh, yeah, be honest, then yeah. we will probably post dilate further with a uh, with another port balloon. Is so that a reasonable approach, Tato? I think I think it's a fair approach. Uh, you know, yeah, you, you can always go with a higher, uh, bigger balloon uh, after the Ivers. Yep. So I think we have got the Ivers now. Uh, from the left main LED into the left main. Can you all see that? Oh, yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. this is after the 35 uh, stand, 3538, and a port in the left main, but this is still in the. Okay. We are at the distal standage. Yep. Good expansion. No distal standage. Small, small puff. Yes. Oh, flush, flush. 
Yes, that is kind of well opposed. Yep. Uh, coming to the left main. Mm -hmm. Stand is well opposed. Uh, probably need some further dilatation. Yeah. Is there any gap? I think the resolution is a little bit blur from, uh, from yeah. where we Is there any gap? Okay. So, yeah. Yep, we can still go. Yeah, we can still go higher. Yep. Yeah, still a bit of gap as the two to six. Possible. Yes. Okay. So I think we can comfortably take a 4.5 port balloon and uh, further port the left main before we cross the wire into the circumflex. All right. Can you have a 4.5, please. Okay. So that, back, back to the earlier question I wanted to pose to Rosli and uh, Prof Zenger. So you know, it's, if you have a very short left mid, even shorter than left uh, than six millimeters, and you some sense see that, and there is a, a need for for optimization. So, I mean, uh, what is your what is your feeling about using a balloon that uh, jut into the uh, aorta? I mean, how often is it about, and what what are, what are the tips and tricks that you should be looking out for under the circumstances? Yeah, I mean, if it's very short and you want to put it in the iota, it's the only problem is that it tends to slip out uh, to the uh, to into iota because it's a slight, uh, you know, uh, the area which is has got the slightest, uh, the, the lowest resistance. Sometimes you can try, but sometimes you can't manage it. Uh, especially it's almost like, you know, very short, almost like, a, you know, a separate origin. In cases like that, uh, you know, I would probably end with, uh, in the end, uh, I, of course, you've got to optimize the uh, austral LED uh, and proximal LED to make sure that uh, it's good. And then I will probably use a kissing balloon and I will probably accept it as such because I don't think you can okay. do a proper pot. It's, it's so short. Sure. So it's about two balloons, basically, yeah. and then you get the, some, some uh, yeah. diameter of both balloons, isn't it? Uh, Prof Zanger, what is your... Approach for this kind of uh, situation. Very short left main, shorter than six okay. millimeters, perhaps, and uh, you need to optimize. One, two. Yeah, uh, if it's a very short left man, it's a, okay, always uh, to do the optimization for left man. And the uh, problem is that uh, I was to intravascular imaging to uh, check a left man to yeah, okay. make sure that stain and opposed to the real. So for this, uh, probably we um, okay. use the six millimeters length as a hot blue or eight millimeter blue. We can uh, protrusion maybe two or three millimeter to into the air time. Probably okay. this is very okay. safe. Okay. Question that, uh, um, you know, uh, that all this rise, uh, do we always have to recross and do a final kissing? Um, uh, quite often, if the results are still good in the austral uh, circumflex side branch, I tend not to go in and open the side branch up and just leave it alone because uh, there's no difference in terms of outcome with the data. For example, like this, I would actually accept it uh, rather than a kissing. <laughs> Okay. Again, once you cross in, if let's say there's dissection and you know the crossing can cause an issue of uh, if you propagate the dissection, another balloon can all, always, of course, uh, can always uh, cause dissection, even though you're careful with the balloon sizing. But that's my take. I mean, I, I, I quite like uh, the results there. Yeah, I mean, it's fair enough. I mean, yeah, okay, so, so now, so now, now you're glad that you actually DCB first before, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, okay, okay. Yeah. uh, Prof. Zenger. Uh, any thoughts on, um, you know, uh, the comments given by Dr. Rosti? Would you still uh, stand and then uh, try and get the DCB across into the side branch? Yeah, I think this result is very good, very good result. So, so for this uh, uh, digital publication, I use the DCB firstly, and it's a very good choice for this uh, lesion. Mm -hmm. um, but if we for some leaders, uh, even we use the um, uh, vessel standing first name and then to do the sun branch DCB balloon is okay because it's because it's, uh, it's a distal nerve man. Uh, we uh, to do that some the uh, open the main vessel stand to sail and uh, use the very short the DCB and uh, I think to count 
uh, cross this uh, uh, this stencil. All right. So you can still approach that to the side branch uh, in a DCB uh, application. So uh, Kumara, uh, the results are very good, and I, I think you've actually done well in regards to the circumflex ostium issue. Um, so uh, you you haven't actually used uh, NC balloon down the distal LED, have you? Uh, Am I yet? Not yet. Actually, the the stand looks well opposed on the Ivers, though. Oh, okay, so, so it's fine. So we, we, we can that. accept that. Yeah. MSA eight point four. MSA is eight point four for a three point five stand. I think to Austria already. Eight point proximal to Austria. Yeah, that that's quite good. I think uh, we can accept that. Okay, well expanded and well opposed. Yeah. Uh, what's can your I, plan? Just yeah. one more question about uh, port side port. That means we just rewire. Use a, a non a semi compliant balloon, just a smaller than the vessel size, like a two five in this case, or a three two five, just to open up the ostium of the circumflex to facilitate uh, future interventions. Uh, just in case the patient has got a distal circ or, or even ostial circ gets a bit disease, it will definitely facilitate uh, uh, passing of wires in future interventions. What's your take on that, uh, Prof Zen and Dr. Rosli, Dr. Yeah. Azari also? Yeah, yeah is there wisdom in that in that approach, or should you leave it as it is and then uh, cross it later on? I mean, bear in mind if you actually balloon now, you will deform that area uh, yeah. further, you know. So, Rosalie and Zenger, your thoughts about leaving it alone or doing a crossover and then kiss? Yeah, just my question. Too. So, for this particular case, and uh, we uh, always the port and the rewire for the to into the side branch. If you want to do the kissing blue inflation, final uh, final kissing for this uh, case, or just leaving alone. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so my case is also. I mean, I I, I understand that the uh, issue of uh, trying to open up and making it uh, better, but. Usually in a, a large vessel, like uh, in this case, a circumflex, uh, even if they say restenosis, uh, I feel that there's not going to be a much difficulty getting across. Yes, you can do it uh, for that purpose, but mindful of the fact that you're going to have to rewire uh, across the stand stress into the uh, circumflex. That's number one. Uh, you, we, people would con uh, be concerned and uh, would say that you have to do a final port because when you kiss, the, the proximal edge of the stand may actually be pulled back, uh, pulled into, and you need to do a port. Uh, well, uh, uh, I don't necessarily do for all patients. In this case, the uh, left main is fairly short, uh, but uh, if it's a longer left main, I tend to, yes, do a, a port, and an, uh, I mean, uh, kissing a final port. Okay. But that's something to remember. All right. Yeah. So Thank you. Your, the, your choice, so, um, Kumara. So I'm... I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm quite happy to leave uh, the results as uh, they are. I think the flow is good and, and uh, there's no propagation of dissection in the circumflex. There's no pooling of contrast. So this is the kind of, uh, of uh, uh, dissections that we can accept in, in patients we treat with DCB. Uh, the port has been done. I think uh, we'll just do a final IVERS to, to confirm that the stand is well opposed. If all is well, then I think we, we will just uh, uh, Call it the day. We will we'll stop here. Uh, we will we will remove the balloon pump. Uh, blood pressure is good. Her systolic is now at about 130. She's still very comfortable despite being uh, an elderly lady. I expected her to show, I mean, throw some tantrums, but so far she's been very cooperative. And uh, we'll proglide both uh, access vessels uh, to minimize uh, uh, access complications. With that, uh, are, are we good to good to close the session? That is yeah. I think so. The session doesn't end until 4.30, 4 .30, by the way. What time is it? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you may get 25 minutes for discussion. <laughs> okay, I, I, I leave it to, to the expert panel. Yeah, we we'll yes. just finish the okay. final shot. So, anyway, it gives, it gives us good, uh, a good opportunity to make some discussion. So I think you, you've you actually uh, uh, mentioned about the balloon palm and, and I just want to have your thoughts on uh, when you decide to have balloon palm because I think Rosti did mention some instances you don't have to have a balloon palm. Uh, in this case, the injection fraction noted is about thirty-five percent or thereabouts. So, uh, I mean, what, what what is your what is your uh, usage of uh, balloon pump in, in, in this kind of left main lesions, half and half, or maybe two thirds? So, what what is it? give us an idea of your 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 plan? Personally, Dato, I think it is about fifty percent. 
if uh, we have got a good dominant RCA, which I believe can support the 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 whole procedure, then I would probably shy away from putting in a balloon pump. But if it's a, a very dominant left system and and prolonged inflations, multiple balloon dilatations, a long stance. Uh, then I'll be a bit more cautious. I'll probably put in a balloon pump just to get the extra support. We also have this uh, the new uh, IVAC, the 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 LV left ventricular assist device. But personally, I'm not a fan yet, at least because I think it's a bit more cumbersome putting it in, and the excess is a bit bigger than our balloon pump. Uh, though the data is very scanty and not very encouraging uh, using balloon pumps in high risk procedures, but I still feel it gives us that bit of confidence that bit of uh, safety net uh, especially even in this case i think when we we balloon the left main there was a uh, temporary uh, uh, no flow uh, the blood pressure did come down uh, i'm not sure how it have fared if she had no balloon pump in but uh, somehow it gives us that extra confidence that you know things will be a bit better if we have a balloon pump so my usage is about 50% of the, so it goes from patient to patient and as i mentioned elderly a uh, very uh, dominant left system. Uh, if it's going to be a very complex procedure requiring arthrectomy, uh, multiple balloon inflation, long stents, I would, in most instances, use a balloon pump. Yeah, I think it's a sensible approach. Uh, Rosli, your, your, yeah. your usage of balloon pumps? Yeah, yeah interesting, because Azmi Ghazi did, uh, 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 you know, a series of cases uh, in IGEN before, and the use of uh, IEBP in the left main was only about 5%. Uh, but, okay, there, there are... Because the, the thing about it is that the IBP, the, uh, you know, the amount of support is uh, not much, 0 0.5 at the most, one liter. Uh, but as I agree with you, if you need to, then uh, you might have to, uh, as a matter of confidence, then you want to use uh, uh, IBP. There are high risk uh, group patients and they are very, very high risk, risk group patients. For example, in this case, uh, I would uh, tend not to use a balloon pump because the lesion is fairly short uh, fairly straightforward, even though the LV function is 35% and the right coronary artery was quite big. But if you have a really okay. complex lesion, long lesions, calcified, you know that you're going to have to you know, work, uh, do a lot of work Are and you know by, by, by intervening, the risk of crash, uh, patient crashing is higher than a mechanical uh, support is, uh, I feel is important in that case. So in, in this case, I will probably uh, do without uh, any mechanical support. Oh, yeah. So I'm tempted to say that uh, you know if you're doubt you might want to consider balloon pumps, but it does have its risk. Balloon pumps. I think we need to remember that there are some risks involved with balloon pumps. But given that, also there is some uh, measure of support uh, for for lesions which are complex and LV functions which are poor. Prof Zenger, your view about balloon pumps and uh, this kind this sort of cases for angioplasty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree with the. Uh, Dr. Zasani, yes, uh, for the complex uh, PCI or some is uh, reduced uh, rejected fraction for some uh, patient with uh, 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 very long lesions, probably we use the rota or some <clears throat> uh, um, just aggressive with the lesion preparation. So probably we use the mechanical support for this kind of a case. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, Kumara, you plan to take out this uh, balloon palm uh, as soon as you're done with the case, isn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, her, her intrinsic blood pressure is good. We'll put her on standby for about five minutes and see how she fares. If all is well, uh, we will remove it, uh, study the groin and uh, close it. Because uh, okay. it, it is sheetless, so it's, it's not a big puncture. Uh, we did check her peripheral vessels before putting in the balloon palm. So another contraindication would be patients with severe peripheral artery disease, those who have very bad access. And in those situations, I think uh, we'll probably have to find other ways to support uh, left ventricle. Right. So, uh, yeah, so I think that, that's, 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 that's a, reasonable, uh, a reasonable approach. I wanted to have a question just now. I forgot what it was. But anyway, uh, so, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, yeah the anti -playlet. So what's your anti -playlet regime for this uh, this uh, individual? I mean, uh, left main, end-stage renal disease. She's on dialysis, presumably, yeah? Is, uh... she, she is on dialysis so, and uh, on regular dialysis. She had her dialysis done yesterday right. in preparation for the angiogram, angioplasty today. Uh, HB was optimized. She, okay. she had all the necessary preparations done. 
before we embark on the procedure today. So we will probably put her on uh, clopidogrel and aspirin, uh, aim for at least one year of dual antiplatelet therapy. If there's any concern, if she develops any bleeding episodes or any situation which uh, requires interruption of a dual antiplatelet therapy, I will at least aim for a month, a month or so. Uh, of course, she will be under our close monitoring. We will, we will regularly see her. And most of the time, we tell the family members and her to watch out for any possible source of bleeding, uh, mainly uh, upper GI bleeds. So if she sees any change in stool color and all that, of course, she will come back to us. Uh, if she can pass the one month, one month uh, mark, I, I'm quite happy to then cut down to just single antiplatelet therapy. The DAPT will also be combined with a proton pump inhibitor. In my practice, I usually give it a BD dose for the first one month. And then when they come up for follow-up at the first month, we then cut down to uh, once daily, either Nexium or Controlog, either Pentoprozole or uh, 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 Nexium. Is, as, as uh, uh is doesn't really make any difference, I think. Right, excellent. So, so, what, so yeah, I, mean, I just want to find out what is the shortest uh, duration you are comfortable with. Okay, one month we know, but you know, what is yeah. the shortest thing imaginable that you would be comfortable with, assuming uh, high, high bleeding it, risk patients? It, my experience, I think that if you're putting in a stand in the left main, nothing less than a month. Okay, nothing less than a month. If, if it goes below one month, I'll be very uncomfortable, very jittery to interrupt the DAPT. Okay, yeah. Uh, Rosli, your comment on this in regards to this uh, very individualized group of your patients? Yeah, I, I tend to also agree that uh, uh, minimum uh, of a month. Uh, there have been some data to suggest that maybe two weeks, but uh, I'll be very concerned with this. But a month uh, of the APT and uh, hopefully it will, you know, she can go through that one month. If she goes through, then uh, then we go on and carry on and, you know, to the what is the next shortest uh, duration. So three oh, months, of months and so on. Uh, so uh, that is uh, that from that point of view. But it comes to the point uh, that we need to really emphasize that in cases like this, our mm -hmm. PCI results must be as good as you can. So this is where the vessel preparation imaging will uh, come into play and ensure that there's no distal edge resection. The stents are well opposed, uh, well uh, expanded uh, in particular. Uh, and with that, then the risk of stent thrombosis will be less. So uh, we need to ensure in the high bleeding risk patients in this high complex uh, uh, lesion, uh, PCI and position, we have to go all the way. And that includes imaging. So I, I, I think that in, in, in places that uh, you might have a limitation imaging, you have to think it over and see whether you want to proceed to do this uh, or at least then, you know, uh, uh, do it with someone else in another uh, institution that has uh, facilities of that nature. So I think that's a very, you raise a very important point. Like basically, there's two components to that, which is one, the lesion itself and the results of the lesion that you've tackled. And second thing is, of course, the antiplatelet duration. So I think the two has to go in hand in hand together with the background risk of the individual. But I think you, your important point you raise is that if you don't have imaging, which is fundamental, I think, when you do this kind of lesions, uh, you should probably reconsider doing it at the center that has those facilities. Prof Zengir, um, your take on the antiplatelet regime, duration, shortest duration, uh, any tips and tricks in regards to this kind of uh, patients? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for this kind of patients, it's uh, dual antiplatelet okay. therapy is very important for this uh, distal nerve membrane care. So fortunately, I, uh, um, so I, I want to do the, the single stand for this distal nerve membrane so uh, if we use the two stand technique properly, you use the uh, DAPT uh, one month, so that's, uh, that's a big problem um, for the stand thrombosis. Another oh. question for this uh, kind of case, I work, uh, usually I use uh, uh, intravascular imaging to guide oh, yeah. the PCI to do to the optimize the results to probably we shout the uh, dual antiplatelet therapy. Right, great. Uh, Kumara, any As, comments? I think? Azari, can I just bring up, because there was uh, there's a question on the chat, and I, and, and I cannot answer this because I don't have experience. The, the question was on the use of Austil's flash balloon. Have a look at that. Do you have uh, any inkling on that? Uh, wait, <coughs> on the chat. I've, I've seen uh, some YouTube videos of this Austil flash balloon. It's basically a, a circular balloon, on a half, half a balloon, which is rounded. 
and then another half which is a normal semi uh, a non compliant balloon it's a very interesting concept but uh, i don't think it's available in our setting yet but if somebody is going to bring it in i think it has got a role to play okay so i don't see it on the chat though. you you must have a different chat from mine but <laughs> that's interesting well, so austral flash balloon is boss i I'm, I'm completely I, i'm unable to to help you on that you've heard of this austral flash balloon yeah I never used to use the balloon sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay floor right. i Let's hope that answers, that answers your question um for that uh, whoever posted a very kind question Okay, so Kamara, your results have been, uh, uh, you know, very very impressive. Uh, you, you, would you like to give us some uh, final tips and tricks about, uh, you know, this case, or uh, you know, in general, your cases about uh, about left main stenting? Since we got still another burning fifteen minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is very boring. <laughs> All right, so I think uh, I mean this is a a very interesting case in the sense that. Like we had mentioned earlier, it is a complex patient, complex lesion, uh, and and uh, I think like what uh, Dr. Rosli and Prof. Uh, Zen had mentioned, uh, the key is in vessel preparation uh, and planning the procedure well. Uh, I think we had spent the last week uh, planning this. Uh, we had, I mean, I had consulted my other colleagues on how we should do it. You know, whether it's going to be a single stand, two stand I strategy, mean, uh, whether it's going to be arthrectomy versus IVL. And even if it's arthrectomy, is it going to be rota or is it going to be OAS? Uh, of course, we it's a very healthy argument come discussion, uh, which I think should be done in most workplaces. All right. Nobody is always right. Nobody is always wrong. So, and it is always good to get an opinion from someone who has done uh, procedures like this, like what Dr. Rosli uh, beautifully mentioned, if you do not have IVERS or any form of imaging in your center, probably you should not embark on, on uh, complex procedures like this. Because if, if our stent is not, uh, if the angioplasty is not done well, if the stent is not implanted well, then you will be a bit hesitant to uh, uh, shorten your duration of DAPT. If you're, if you're comfortable, you're confident, they've done a good job, that your stent has been placed well, then if the, the, the situation comes to, you know, where you have to interrupt a dual antiplatelet therapy, you would not hesitate much. Right? At least you know you have done your good job. And if anything happens beyond that, then of course, uh, there's nothing much we can do about. But at least you go to bed, have a good sleep thinking that you've done a good job. Uh, number two, I think uh, it's also important to counsel patients well when they when they go through a, a complex procedure like this. Uh, this this patient has got is hard of hearing and we had to get the whole family in some are from uh, penang up north some are from kuantan they had to take time off to come and meet us and we explained the whole procedure told them the risk and all so we are we are lucky that the family was on our side and they agreed they consented to a, a complex procedure and we'll probably meet them and just update on what we have done so far so i think uh, the take home message for most of our our more junior members who are here with us i think uh, planning is crucial plan uh, and of course it's always good to have someone to proctor you if you are going to start something new you have not done this in your center yet get someone who has done a bit uh, a bit more of these cases with a bit more experience who knows how to bail you out if things go wrong and then uh, I think with that, we start to build experience and then do what we can do to help our patients. With that, thank you very much, Dr. Sri, for the opportunity. And if I can also thank the team today. I've had a splendid team. Uh, I forgot to introduce the, the team. The scrub nurse, Helmi, Pushpa and Boges, uh, Che Yang and Hamiza, and of course, uh, Long Sheng and uh, Krish. Uh, thank you for all the support. And of course, Brosmed for organizing this, this uh, session. I think I think it's uh, uh, a reasonably uh, interesting session. We have had a lot of discussion. I think uh, I learned quite a bit, uh, and and the, the discussion from the panelists definitely changed the way I I would have managed this case uh, from the beginning. So thank you very much, Dr. Sri. Thank you, Dr. Rosli. Thank, thank you, you. Prof. Zen. Kumara and team. If I can just add, Kumara, uh, uh, it's a splendid case, and I I really appreciate uh, the way that you did it very uh, thoughtful, measured manner, making things uh, clear. And, you know, the process and the steps uh, are done very clearly and well. And, you know, and in the end, a uh, very good result. So, uh, you know, uh, thoughtful, step-by-step uh, -step manner. And, uh, and for me, I really appreciate that because this is something learning and 
and uh, you have made it uh, uh, simple. And in a, in a, in a, we don't we, we can't really see just the procedure alone. We have to see the patient, and you have brought it up beautifully in terms of how you uh, manage this. And in the end, the patient is uh, utmost and key here. So thank you very much for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Great comments, Rosalie. Uh, Dr. Zenger, any uh, com uh, final comments from you, please? Yeah, okay. it's, yeah it's a very complex uh, um, distal level and publication lesion. It's a uh, very good result from uh, this another case. And uh, I just want to say for this uh, particular case, for this uh, how to plan to do this case is very important. So last thing means is a strategy. What a strategy for this uh, distal level publication? For some patients, so probably uh, we use the single stem with a very good result. But for the some complex distal publication, probably we use the uh, two stem technique is a good uh, choice for that particular case. Thank Five friends here. My friend Jay. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Zenger. So with that, I, I can make the final, if you allow me to make the final comments uh, for, for this case. I think we've, we've had a remarkable uh, presentation of uh, not just technique, uh, but approach uh, and the thought processes involved. But I think most importantly is that all these processes have been made available and possible through Machina. new devices that we have, which is in particular your drug-coated balloons, the new scoring Hello. balloons, the high pressure scoring balloons, excellent cross excellent reuse. Uh, and uh, the DCBs and the stents have now, and the pot balloon, you mean, you mentioned uh, this very new addition. So, this, you know, from as Rosalie, my, from our time when we were a younger interventionally, this has actually changed the landscape of uh, the lesions that we actually do. Uh, and I think, Prof. Oh, and Joseph, is that, you know, with this. And Joseph, the option of a uh, strategy is now possible with good results. And I think that's the most important thing and safe. So uh, I'd like to thank, of course, Brosmet for making this possible, the team in IGN, ICL, and Kumara and team for making this possible. Uh, Rosely for your kind comments and your, uh, you know, uh, your in, in, in intuitive uh, uh, views. Prof. Zenger for your excellent comments. Uh, and I'd like to um, say thank you all for a wonderful afternoon. I've learned a lot. It's been a very good, deliberate, sensible, safe approach in how to do a possible, uh, potentially difficult uh, left main stem lesion. So with that, um, I'd like to thank everyone indeed for making this a great success. Great images, great audio as well. Great for the technical team. Thank you very much, Prof. Zenger, Rosli, and Kumara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Me. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Mm. Come. Yeah. Uh.